What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the Awaken Soul Podcast. I'm your host, CEO Hayes, and right off the top, if you want to follow us, make sure you're doing so at Awaken Soul Pod or at the Awaken Soul Pod, just depending on what platform you're looking for us at. Make sure you're also going out and following the Awaken Soul Pod uh, discussion group. Just search the Awaken Soul Podcast on any platform you're on. We'll pop up. What's going on? Uh, we got a great show planned for you guys this week, as we do every single week. I'm really excited to bring you guys the content that I have planned this week. Um, we're going to get into why your intentions sometimes don't matter or usually don't matter. I on a couple of episodes ago, I actually talked about the fact that I am someone who I am. I base things off the results. I typically don't care about intentions. Um, so to say, I care about what the result of your intentions were. That's kind of how I, I tend to judge things. Um, and so because of that, we got a few uh, questions and about that and how to uh, when intentions do matter versus when they don't matter. And uh, because of that, I kind of turned it into its own topic for this week. So um, I really like took the questions that we had based off that comment that I made and I flipped it and um, turned it into the content for this week. So I'm really um, going to break that down, hopefully, and hopefully you guys can, you know, walk away and decide uh, how you feel about it. Are you, are you going to judge off intentions? Or are you going to judge off the actions or the results of those intentions. You know, everyone has a different perspective to take on. We're going to go ahead and attack it this week. I'm going to give you my perspective on it. But as you guys know, everything we talk about on the Awakened Soul is an open discussion. So I like to hear from you guys after this and let me know how you feel about it. Um, but before we get into all that, we are going to actually get into the segment that starts off our show. We're going to get into the end of the minds of Hayes segment. So because of that, or before that, I should say, before that, we have to uh get into our intro music and i see you guys on the other side of that all right ladies and gentlemen so we're in the, my dark and twisted crazy ass mind this is the end of mine hey segment where i typically on my podcast i don't talk about a lot of like i don't like building the main topics um for the podcast off like things going on in like tv or pop culture things like that while i do discuss some of that uh at a, at a different level i tend to like break it down differently um and because i know we have so many new listeners who have all like reached out uh recently and you know people have been sharing the podcast a lot lately and, you know it's quarantine time so it makes sense but um because of that so like what i do during this segment is i like to you know talk about what is going on in my mind whether it be about tv or something else and the thing that i want to kind of focus it on um is unfortunately more COVID-19 uh, stuff that I just want to talk about because we had some some preconceived things, right? Uh, when this all first started, there was a lot of going around thinking that or conversation that black people are basically immune to COVID-19 uh, and the coronavirus. And that has since been really debunked. Um, there's actually an article that came out today that said that black people are actually contracting and dying of coronavirus at much higher rates than um, other races. And so when you think about that, um, for example, we're going to look at uh, Milwaukee because I do have the statistics for Milwaukee here is that uh, half of Milwaukee, uh, Milwaukee counties, uh, 900 and ni 945 cases um, and 81 percent of its 27 deaths were black. So just let that sink in for a minute. Um, it's it's. It's one of the few places and I'm using Milwaukee as an example here because not every state is using race as a breakdown in their statistics of the of COVID-19. So um, it, the Milwaukee is one of those. So I, I use that that as a, you know, as a as a as a start or jumping off point. Um, Michigan also uh, Michigan's state population is only 14 percent black, but yet 35 percent of the COVID-19 cases in Michigan and 40% of the deaths in Michigan are, uh, are, are black. So when you think about the percentage of the population to the percentage of the deaths and the infected, it's an alarmingly high rate. Um, and then also uh, Illinois, North Carolina, also two other states that are publishing their statistics as far as uh, they're taking a look at the racial aspect of it with COVID-19 cases. And it, it's, it, it follows the trend there um, as well, that it, the higher percentage of the Afri African-American population percentage wise, not number wise, 
is being uh, infected with COVID-19 and are dying at, at higher rates. And so this is why I typically and I like saying, look, I, I get it. These things, you know, and the whole I, I would like to think that the whole COVID-19 and black people being immune to it started off as kind of a joke. Um, because we didn't have a lot of information. It wasn't really in the States when that was going on. And, you know, people look for things that they can to gain comfort from. And if that that kind of helped take people's minds off of the seriousness of COVID-19. But like with a lot of things that for some people, not all, has then turned into people really did think that there was a that there was a chance or that they may not get it. Even with the NBA players and stuff, there was still a little bit of that going around where it's Black people are basically immune. Black people can't be infected. And all I want to do is use this platform to say that is completely and by statistics false. We are actually, it seems like, based off what I had, and you know, not every state, like I said, is reporting that information, that we are actually at a higher risk than our um, Caucasian counterparts and other races as far as in the, in America uh, to get that. So I really wanted to talk about that. I wanted to put that information out there. I try not to harp too much on the COVID-19 thing. And I know I've said that every week and I've kind of got uh, into it a little bit every week. And, you know, it, it's it's unfortunately just the reality of it. And I don't and I want the whole purpose of this platform. I always say I didn't get into entertainment when I became a podcaster. I got into education. And because of that, I want to give you guys the information that I have as it comes to me. So that's what we have. We're going to go ahead. We're going to hop off that. We're not going to stay on COVID-19 things uh, too, too long. But another thing that I want to talk about um, is what kind of like the whole culture uh, and these uh, quarantine parties that are happening on social media and the challenges and everything that people are using to try to take their mind off or just to connect with people. Um, Just a couple nights ago, we actually had um, it was Little John versus T-Pain. And, you know, we got more coming up with producers and DJs and everything else. DJ Nice is is doing his thing as well. Um, Shout out to. Uh, my home, not my, it's not really my hometown because I grew up in Italy and Germany, but I spent a lot of time in St. Louis, Missouri, and they're actually having the show me cipher, which, you know, it, it's, it just shows the creativity of what we can do when we're trying to connect that we, and we need to connect and how we go about doing that. And, you know, last week I talked about Skillshare a lot and I talked about growing your skills and what you can do during this time to kind of make it beneficial to you, but also just to have fun and to kind of take our minds off of it. All this stuff that's going on and these things and battles that are happening on social media, it needs to be happen, uh, happening. And so another thing that I want to get on, just hopping off that during the end of mine and Hayes segment is we got who is going to be going into the uh, Basketball Hall of Fame this year. And as I, I believe it was already said, uh, Kobe was going in. We knew that. I think even without his death, he was definitely going in. But he's going to be joined by Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, and Tamika Catchings. And so all of those, like this is going to be one of the best classes of um of the uh, inductions into the hall of fame at one time looked at uh, kevin the titles that kevin Dar- kevin garnett tim duncan and kobe have um i'm pretty sure if you kind of look at it like there was probably like a, a nice six to eight year stretch where one of those players were on a team that won or was in the finals for probably even longer than eight years so when you when you look at that and and what tim duncan was able to do with the spurs and how they put that team together kobe with his uh, multiple runs at titles with different teams. And also, this is going to be one of the most emotional inductions of the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. I also think when you look at what's going on in the world um, and when we really take some time in to get emotional and to think about that, I can only imagine what the NBA and the Hall of Fame is going to do for Kobe to acknowledge his induction. Um, I'm sure, I don't know if they've said it or not, like who's going to induct him. I'm sure it's probably going to be his wife, if not. Um, one thing that I thought about uh, off the top of my head is that have we heard anything from Phil Jackson since Kobe passed away? If we have, you know, my mistakes uh, for it, I just I don't remember even like with the memorial. I don't remember much about Phil Jackson, like things that he said or that uh, really stuck with anyone. If he does come out and, uh, and he probably will for this induction, I can only imagine uh, the words that he's going to share. So it, it's going to be an emotional time for sure. And it's going to be a time where a period where we all kind of sit back and just hopefully take it in and enjoy something. What I try to do in my memorial of Kobe Bryant, when I did my episode after his passing is I really tried to memorialize what he meant to me as a basketball player and to, and to be on the positive. And he brought people so much joy and pain. Also, if if you were someone who didn't like the Lakers, but I really hope that this time is used as a celebration of his career 
uh, more so than just mourning the fact that he's gone. And that's my personal opinion. I know everyone mourns differently. I am someone who I try my best to remember the good times uh, when somebody passes away. You know, it's hard to look close they are to me. As most of you guys know, I lost um, my cousin Terrence not too long ago. Uh, it's been about three years at this point, who was more like my brother. We actually raised his brothers. And still to this day, when his birthday comes around, it's it's kind of hard sometimes to remember just the good times. I do eventually get to that point, but I always go to that dark place first. Um, but I'm, I'm sidetracking it with my own personal stuff. Really, I do hope uh, that this induction is is a celebration of him. Um, one last thing, the very last thing that I want to talk about in this uh, in the minor Hayes segment is <laughs> um, what's what the entertainment industry. And I know I've talked about it before. And for anyone who listens to the film frequency, we talk about it heavily there. Um, but I really and I've, I've talked about a little bit like AMC theaters have said that they don't really uh, expect to be open until maybe mid June, if not later. And, uh, you know, I think that's still optimistic, even if they do reopen in June. I think that you know, for things to go back to normal, where people feel comfortable um, going to the movie theater with big, large crowds, I think it's going to take a while. Um, and with that said, like there's a lot of talk going around that AMC theaters can possibly close down permanently. What would that what that would mean um, is it's kind of hard to judge. Like, would some theaters close down? Um, but, you know, we're getting a lot of uh, re-release dates. Uh, dates. Candyman has even been pushed back now, um, which you know, I think that was supposed to come out in like September. So the fact that they're pushing that back even tells you even more uh, just how some people are, you know, expecting and looking at this and what it could be. So, you know, it's going to be a rough time, I think, for anyone in, in, the, in the entertainment industry and just all that stuff. Is, it's going to take a while for things to go back to normal. Um, and, you know, I hope that I'm not somebody who all, is always for government bailouts. Um of, of corporations. But in this case, I really do hope that they can figure something out because there's almost impossible to plan for stuff like this. So, you know, um, let me know how you guys think about it. I want to know, like, do, are you guys planning, like if the movie theaters reopen, let's say in a month, um, after if this whole, uh, recent strand of, of 30 days of social distancing, when that goes away, if the movie theaters reopen, are you guys going to be comfortable to go back to the movie theaters? I guess we'll see. Um, I know some people probably feel differently than others. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But that's it for the In the Mind of Hay segment. This has been a presentation of the Breaks, Breaks, Breaks Media. 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 Media.